All right, everyone. We have a pretty awesome thing. I finally was able to get it at one of the stores. I have the new Capenna Commander decks, and I'm pretty stoked because it actually has the Collector Booster sample pack. Yeah, these probably are not the most, like, best value because there's only two cards in it. But I'm still pretty stoked to see what's inside this. I actually want to build Tivit myself, but I want to conduct the Clue Tribal that I actually have myself, and I want to update it to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like, open it up. I cracked it open so it's a little faster for the channel itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up, see what's inside the pack, and just give my overall opinion of the deck itself. So let's get right into Kraken. All right, so let's do this. Let's get right into this. All right, first thing you have in there is the deck box, which is pretty cool. This overall insert, it's kind of worthless in my opinion nowadays. They do give you these, which I guess you could use for something. I don't really know what. Even this, like, why does this need to be an insert? I think they're just filling things to fill the void, you know, because you can't take this out anymore, which is a little upsetting. But either way, you work with what you get. It is pretty cool how they give you like a little mini deck box right from the get-go. That's cool. Oh, it's really attached in there. I did not see that. Look at this. It's like really in there. So I'll just yank it out. Because this is... So it doesn't move around. Cool. All right. So let's just dive right in. You have the deck box. You have little life spin down. Those are always pretty cool. Again, obviously you can get D20s from literally all over the place. So I don't see as to why... Was really needs to include it in a sense. This is the rules guide on how to play magic. It's cool they still include this and it pulls up. Gives you a little idea of. Oh no, it's, it's yeah, see, just the basic rules. It's pretty cool. But we all know how to play. All right, let's just get right into it. It's super folded up. Oh, I get it. Don't get me wrong, but like this is like really sealed up. I'm not expecting much out of this, in all honesty. Just because of what, it's a it's a free sample, you know. Oh, let's get a knife. It's a little easier to open it out. So I'll be cool if I get something really nice, but yeah, it upside down. Yeah, it's upside down. Okay, so I'm gonna just give a quick reaction. So it's a three three on this side. So it's not a land. Oh, so they give you that little mini insert they always give you. First card is a Henze. Oh, cool. So I'm actually looking to build a Henze. I almost bought the Henze pre-con, but I was like, ah, I don't really need a Henze. So I'm actually, I'm pretty stoked about that. And then the other one is a Rikish Revelist. That's what I say. Like, see, most of the foil options they've been given everyone is just a generic thing. I, don't, I haven't really seen people pull like really cool cards for this low the foil slot. So it's neat that they have that built in as well. So it's pretty cool. I got a Henze. I'm going to sleeve that up real quick. Just because I, I am going to be building a Henze probably so it's cool that we got that let's get right into this little pack right here see what options they give you for these pre-cons so on the back end there's always those massive amount of tokens so tokens are giving you tentacles fairies squid tokens well that's pretty look cool looking more of these tokens again i'm pretty excited that they're giving these out um, not really necessary because you can always get some dice, but it's cool to have it pre-installed in a sense. And then you have the treasures. I do wish that they gave one foil treasure just because every, like, family has one now. They do give you that hard stock foil. I wish that this was gilded, even though you can't really use it. It'd be cool that th if this option was foil. It does give that little glare around the trim. So it's cool. It gives like a sneak peek as opposed to the entire thing being foil. Because compared to the actual card, you see the foiling is very, very different on the actual card itself. So we get Kamiz, which again, me personally, I'm not really a fan of that. And then we have Tivit Seller Sales, Seller Secrets. Again, so the cards are pretty generic in a sense. Some cards that are notable. Let's go through all the cards themselves. Offer... Obscura, Obscura, Source to Plow, which is always a good one, Dabbing Surreteur. There's a lot of like unblockable options built into this deck. It's pretty cool they have that in there. Arcane Signet, always welcome from there. And then we have the Azorius Signets, again, also very wanted. More Signets, Felwar Stone, that's pretty cool they included that. So I like this, how they had each of these Signets built into it. Soul Ring is always a welcome card. Swift Foot Boots, can we get some of the new cards? 
Uh, this jailbreak, interesting. This is the biggest staple right here in the entire set that everyone's going after. The smuggler's share. This is again another one of those ones that's gonna be like a staple for mono white. It's around thirty dollars right now, so I'm just gonna sleeve that up, keep it all nice, nice. Cephalid face taker again. I like that they have been safe cephalids, but I kind of wish they were unblockable. I may do something along those lines with the Kamis. I may make like a cephalid infect option with the unblockables built into it. Change of plans into deep mask. So they give you a good amount of options. Legal schemes a nice one. Misfortune Teller. A lot of these cards I did get in the Collector Booster box, but didn't really see much value. Life Insurance. This is a one that I find personally that's going to be, again, very strong value. I'm going to probably put this in my Taste of Karlov deck just because of the value that it's going to offer the table. Obscure Confluence. Again, great option. They brought the Confluences back. I definitely like that. Then you have Oscar. Oscar. Not really seeing the value in Oscar as a lead commander. But maybe in the coming like sets, they might be worth it. Currency Converter, Archon, Austere Command, that's a good one. Dust Till Dawn, I like how they use now the Magic Online art, which is pretty cool. Sun Titan, always a great staple. Champion of Wits, Chasm Skulker, Commit to Memory, that's a good one to include. Ghostly Pilfer, Identity Thief, another like copy-esque ability. Nadir Kraken, definitely good if you're drawing a lot of cards. Identity Theft. Ooh, Drana, did not know that Drana was in this, that's pretty cool. He's got some more options that are built into it. Profane Command, that's a good one. Alayla, I look, again, I like how Alayla and even Daxos are in this. Ooh, even the Dragonlord Ojutai. So these are cards I did not know were in this set itself. Dragonlord Ojutai, I remember back when it was standard in the Dragons of Tarkir set. It was pretty cool. So those are good notable includes themselves. But then you have like, like Shinobi, Silent Blade Oni. Again, was back in the day, was a very high value. It's good for the reprint. So you can see that there is the option of doing, like I say, an unblockable option built into this deck. But again, I don't think it's really worth with this set itself. I guess the thing I don't really understand is like Tivit, phenomenal card, but there's like no support for him in this deck. I wish they printed some options of like more copy effects would be kind of neat. We have Quiet Spike, Strionic Resonator, something that's very, very good. The Choked Estuary, Creeping Tar Pit. These lands were very well deserve to put in here like especially bedded heath much necessary i don't know why they wouldn't put the let's say the ally ones in here it's a missed opportunity personally wayfarer's bobble always a welcome staple to be added on and then you have just a bunch of lands the lands this time i do like how they put the thrives in here but again the thrives don't really put much value overall to these decks and then a bunch of basic lands oh i do like how they included at least one of each of these that was a good little nice addition I do wish it would be simply just to put all the basic lands to be full art this time. I don't know why they can't just do it at this point because look how it's, it's easy to do. It's a simple print. They're overprinting these full art lands way more than necessary. So at this point, just do it. I don't know why you can't do it, Wizards. Come on. But again, this one is pretty cool. I personally am going to be playing out Tivit as the replacement for my will and... Dustin, I think it was, is the deck that's coming out. But again, personally, I just think that they could do more support for, like, the console's judgment options because console's dilemma is in this deck, but again, they didn't put any support for it at all. So, like, why do they build out Tivit in this deck? Is it just there for the heck of it? I don't really know. So, again, great option for this deck. Smugglers, Share, Life's Insurance. These are good options. Again, I might make an unblockable Cephalid Infect based deck because I haven't done Infect in a very long time and it might be worth it because again, I want to just throw the Cephalids in there. I haven't, I've been wanting to build a Cephalid slash Almerid deck for forever for no literal reason. So why not do it? But again, Tivit is the where I'm going to lean into because with Dead Eye Navigator, you would now have infinite clues. So then I have the option of like sacrificing a bunch of clues. It might be the option to just go crazy with it. But again, that is the quick take on the box itself for the pre-cons. Okay, this, this is the pre-con, which is Obscure Operation. Cool little nickname on it, but definitely worth it. Again, this was $50, though. Is the two extra cards really worth that increase in price? I personally don't really believe so. Um, it's cool that I got a card that I'm interested in building around, the Henzi Toolbox Tour. But again, is it really worth spending an extra $5 for a sample pack? Now, you're going to get two cards out of the compared to like 15. 
So is that worth it? That's me personally. I don't believe that it is. So it, what is your judgment on that one? I'd love to hear down below. But again, that is my quick take on the Obscura pre-con deck. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris from OMG MTG. Thanks for watching. Peace.